everybody some old man I'm back in the kitchen I'm gonna make some cauliflower potato salad tonight which is a whole lot less calories and carbohydrates than my normal potato salad a recipe which I learned from my mother and it's fairly popular not just with uh, me but my at least one of my kids if not both and my in-laws so I've made it frequently in the past few years but since we've decided to go ahead and work on doing a little bit of weight loss we're trying to do more of a keto diet or low carb anyway so potatoes are just not happening so I went ahead and did a little research today because we are planning to do barbecue and I wanted what can we have to go with barbecue and one of the natural things to go with the barbecue of course is potato salad and I said well is there such a thing as keto potato salad and when I started searching for it cauliflower as a substitute for potatoes came up and I'm doing some of the prep work right now. As you can see, I have hard boiled eggs here. And I'm peeling them. So I'll be able to go ahead and chop them up here in a little bit when I get to that step. And add them to my other ingredients. So I'm going to be filming this in segments and just kind of piecing it all together when I get finished. What you see here is me mangling a egg that I boiled a little while ago. And I don't do a really good job sometimes on getting the shell off. But we do what we can. After I finish this, the next thing I need to get started with is the cauliflower. Because it's just about 5 o'clock now and I was aiming to eat at about 6.30. I have not printed out this recipe so it's kind of going from memory. The only thing that's different than the regular potato salad of course is the cauliflower. And that one thing of preparing the cauliflower so it's ready as a substitute, I've been able to commit to memory since it's one step. And that step is take your cauliflower and cut it into cubes. The recipe said one inch cubes. I'm going to go with half inch cubes because when I do potatoes and the potatoes is larger than about half inch, I start getting complaints that the chunks are too big. So I'm going to do the same with cauliflower. And what I do, and I hate peeling eggs sometimes. This one just didn't come out there. What I do with the, with the cauliflower, the quiet bird, is I go ahead and chop it up into the quarter, the half inch pieces like I said, lay it out on a baking sheet lined with parchment paper, which I happen to have, and then bake it I have to go double check the temperature for 30 minutes, 15 minutes, flip it, 15 minutes, and then I've got those baked pieces of cauliflower that are going to have a consistency similar to potatoes after you boil them in similar sized pieces. And that's the secret. After that, the directions would be identical to what I would do to prepare regular potato salad. And we'll go through those steps as I get to there. But I'm just getting the ingredients ready right now. The next thing, of course, 
is ah, just such klutz. The next thing, of course, is getting the cauliflower ready to go. I have some of the other ingredients that I need. I've got mayonnaise. I've got pearl onions. I'll use about half that can. I've got kosher dill because I was out of the last jar of dill pickles. Green beans are for another recipe. And I've got pimentos. I like to use a fairly substantial jar. This is a four ounce jar. Um, they come in two ounce jars and then they come in the huge jars that have sliced pimentos. I don't need that many. One other ingredient that's not here on the counter right now is yellow mustard. I do have yellow mustard, it's still in the fridge. These are all in open containers. I'm probably going to go ahead and pull out another container of mayonnaise because it's in the fridge. I'll wait until I get to that step. But we'll be showing you how I add all these things and mix them up and make potato salad. So let's go on to the next step and I'll show you when I get there. Some old man. Well, I'm back with my cauliflower. Let's go ahead and chop this up into reasonable sized pieces. Let's get the stuff out of here. And in light of the fact that I'm going to be doing composting now, I'm going to take all these little bits of green. Go ahead and get a container to put all this green stuff in and eventually we'll have a dedicated compost bin set up. But for right now I'm just going to grab a bowl and So I will just take all this stuff I'm taking off of my uh, kitchen scraps from vegetable things, of course. You don't want to use uh, any meats or dairy or anything. That will definitely screw up a compost pile. It will cause unnecessary uh, things to be growing there. You can compost things like uh, dairy and meat but it is not in the same kind of compost pile. It's using soldier flies or something. And although that's a valid method, I don't want to do it here because it isn't appropriate for gardening. It's more appropriate for livestock raising. Okay. I am just about there. All the green stuff is out. Go ahead and half an inch slices and normally I wouldn't have to chop it up quite so evenly I just make it small enough ch chunks that I can put it in my blender and I use the blender to cut it down so it's a smooth paste that I'll add things like uh, sour cream and whatnot and butter to make it into mashed potatoes. But we're not doing that tonight. Tonight, that's probably much larger than I need, but that's okay. Take all this stuff, spread it out here. I think I probably should have used larger okay just going to chop this up into my pieces
so these larger pieces I can cut in half. The rest will break free. Hopefully, get that to work. That's good. Put this in the sink. And clean up a little bit of my mess. Do a more thorough job after we're finished, but okay. And I have to get this heated up and then we'll cook it for 15 minutes, flip it, 13, 15 more minutes, and we'll be ready for the next step. And we'll show you that in a minute. Well, while the cauliflower is in the oven baking, I'm going to go ahead and start working on the sauce. I did get that other bottle of mayonnaise out of the fridge. And just kind of carefully, oh, not so carefully, measure out approximately what I think I need. I've made this potato salad so many times that I don't really need to measure it. I kind of have a feel for how it needs to feel, you get what I mean. I did go ahead and jot down some notes, and I said a, one cup of mayonnaise and half a cup of yellow mustard. And I don't know if those proportions, the proportions are right, but I don't know if the total quantity is right. Now I have a empty bottle here. I need to go ahead and get the next one in because I don't have a cup there yet. And of course, I got to open the new bottle. Which is always fun. Okay, there we go. We'll just go ahead and take a little bit more out, and that's approximately a cup. And we'll just squish this in here until it looks about right. That's good enough for now. And the other things that I need to do is get the These things can go in directly. Let me drain them a little bit. Don't know if I'll find a use for this bottle or not. It's a convenient little bottle, but I don't really you use them for anything. I use the larger bottles for you know bacon grease and so forth like that, but little bitty ones like that, just not large enough. Okay, <clears throat> get a couple pickles out. My recipe calls for two full-size dill pickles. Okay, cut the end off. I'll need the stem. this down to where they're fairly small, uh, small enough that I can get them with my little chopper, which I'll grab now. And my chopper, this is a gadget that we picked up, oh geez, must be eight or ten years ago or more. And it's actually been very useful over the years, but one of the things I especially use it for is for chopping up things like this so it'll be very small. So I could just kind of go ahead and put this in here, like so. And of course the stuff around the edges didn't get chopped as well. As you can see, that does a pretty good job of turning it into mush, or you know, so it's small chunks, similar to what the uh, 
pimento is, comes in naturally. And I'll do the same thing for half a can of my. And let me put this in the. Well, actually, I might need some more, so I'm going to leave it there. But I'll put the pickles away. I know that. Okay, I'm back, and I've got a small Tupperware container. And with that, what did I do with my can opener? Ah, it's just one of those days. Okay, that's about a half a can. I'm going to put that, whoops, just a little bit full. Pardon me while I clean up the mess as I go. Drain off the rest of the juice off this can. And make a handy little place to pour in. Like so. And chop, chop, chop. And if there are a few bigger pieces, it doesn't bother me. One more thing that I got to get up, and I will probably use the chopper for, although I don't always, and that is onion. The onion does not go in the sauce, makes it just a little bit too much of it. But okay, I will need the cutting board for that though. So, get those ingredients. Yeah, I definitely need to go ahead and add more uh, mustard and sour cream because I can tell that's not enough just from the feel of it. Let me put some of these other things away. I have three minutes left on the microwave until I have to flip my cauliflower to the other side so it will cook evenly. Uh, let's see if that's going to be enough. So, that consistency is about right. So, I'm going to put a little bit. Shake it in. A little bit of salt and pepper. This is kind of one of those things that's too flavor. If you uh, really don't want salt or pepper, leave them out. If you really like heavy salt and pepper, add it to your, you can add it uh, as you wish. The thing about the salt and pepper is you can add them and probably will at the table. It doesn't have to be cooked into the recipe. But I like to get a head start Okay, so I'd say the sauce is ready to go. Just use that spoon to dish it out. I'll put these away. <clears throat> Have to do some major cleaning here, obviously. While I'm waiting for that, I'll toss the can and rinse off the cutting board. Okay, and I do want to rinse this off at least. 
And I think we're ready to go on flipping the cauliflower. Just pull that out. And of course, I got the glasses all steamed up so I can't see them. Let's go ahead and kind of give it a little bit of a flip. It doesn't have to be a precise thing, just want to make sure that a little bit of it's turned over. Onion. I do need to get an onion. I'm going to be using one medium yellow onion. Again, this is not an exact science, it's more of an art. And I will be trying different things. I'm going to move things around here, like so. Yeah, I'm getting a request for uh, somebody wants a treat, so I'll be back in just a second. The question is, is who is the more spoiled pet, the dog or the bird? Admittedly, the bird doesn't come down and sit right next to you all the time like the dog does, but... Fortunately for me, I'm not the one that she comes and sits right down next to. Okay, so here we go. We've got the onion diced up to a fairly small. And there aren't too many big pieces. Okay, we won't need the cutting board anymore because I've already chopped up everything else that goes into this. Oh, I do need the knife though because the next thing that needs to go into the mix are the eggs. And the eggs don't need a cutting board. I just go ahead and quarter them lengthwise and then just slice, slice, slice so that the pieces are cut up fairly small. And if any escape to me and don't get cut up enough, I can reach in and grab them. You do have to be careful when doing this because you'll notice I've got the blade going toward my hand. These are not particularly sharp knives, but if you aren't careful, you can slice yourself. That's one advantage of using a cutting board is that you don't have to worry about chopping off fingers. Okay, that's it. For the eggs. And as soon as I get the cauliflower out, it goes in with the egg and onion, and then I push, mix it up first, and then I put the sauce all over it and blend it until everything is coated evenly. And then I have one more thing to do, is adding paprika. And in fact, the way I usually make it is I put a little bit, whoop, not that much, that's good into the sauce, mix that in. And then I put just about as much more on top after I've mixed everything together in the big bowl. And then after it's all mixed up, while I'm doing other cooking, it all goes in the fridge and sits there to chill until it's time to go. Okay, I got six more minutes. 
Well, I'm not going to have you sit there watching while I twiddle my thumbs to wait for that six minutes to go up. I'm going to pause the camera and start up when it's time to go ahead and pull out the cauliflower. Time is up on our cauliflower cooking, so I'm going to pull that up. Oh, that seam's getting me every time. I, swear. I should know better. Okay. So I'm not even going to wait for it to cool off because I'm impatient. I've got things to do and things to be. I'm just going to take this and just shovel it on in here. Actually, you can see the consistency is similar to mashed or similar to potatoes after you cook them boiling water for. Oh, five or ten minutes or whatever till they soften up just a little bit, but not squishy. I don't remember if I've actually made this particular recipe before. I think I would remember if I did, but I don't. And of course, I have uh, a lot of things to do afterwards, but we'll do that after I finish some of the other chores. Okay, so I'll just take my whoop, take my spoon and combine this stuff so it's somewhat evenly distributed, so I can see eggs and whatnot in there. Okay, we'll just take this. get every last drop. I would get a, a spatula and just squeegee out there until I had it all. But I'm not worried about it right now. I'm just going to go ahead and mix this in. We'll see if I eyeball the right amount of uh, sauce. Looks like I'm approximately correct. I don't think I'm going to have to add any more. And sometimes when I've made this in the past, I'll start out with a five pound bag of, potato, bag of potatoes, which certainly yields more potatoes than one head of uh, cauliflower yields. They actually, I've even looked up recipes on the internet to see how they compare, and the recipe I was sort of following, or to get an idea, actually said two heads of cauliflower for 16 uh, or 12 servings which seems a, a bit much for two people. So, as you can see, I've got a whole cup of uh, and my propica. If I can get it to come out. Here we go. Not too much. I'm going to hurry, I'll just use aluminum foil, it's the fastest thing. And squeeze this into the fridge somewhere. And that is all there is to it. Next, we'll go out and see how we're going to do the barbecue. Hold that thought, some old man. Off to the barbecue. Okay. Put a little clean up here in the barbecue. We saw some coals left over from before. Now some people go ahead and will put their charcoal in the barbecue and douse it with lighter fluid and light them up. Well this is, first of all, this, uh, this uh, charcoal that I've got is the self-lighting so I don't need charcoal lighter. But I haven't needed charcoal lighter even when I use regular briquettes. And the reason is this other gadget that I picked up. I don't remember where, I remember who told me about it, but I don't remember where I had to order it from. But this thing is a wonder. It's a, it's a charcoal chimney. What it is, is it's basically a chimney that's got a little support at the bottom and a little gap in the back. You just go ahead and stick two or three pieces of newspaper in and stick it in there and fill the rest of the way with your charcoal.
just about done with this bag. Which is a terrible shame, but now I'll have to go and open the big bag the next time. Right now though, I just have to go ahead and get the lighter, get that started, and we'll let things warm up. Okay, and I have the handy dandy barbecue lighter with the extended flame. So I'll just take this down here, light the newspaper in two or three spots. As you can see, the flames have died down. There's still a little bit there, but I'm seeing that there's a lot of white coals in there too, which is what I was looking for. So I can go ahead, and you'll notice that I'm using a glove. This is very hot. So I'm gonna take this and just dump kind of off to one side. And then I'll take this and set it over here out of the way. I actually have a paver stone, concrete paver stone that I have set up there on the edge of the, uh, the railing of the deck so that I can actually safely put it up there without burning the wood of the deck. Uh, there we go. And just let that set there and give it another 10 or 15 minutes for the whole thing to get warm and then I'll be bringing my chicken out and putting it on the grill. So we'll be going ahead and pausing the, pausing the show again and be back in a little bit. Well, it's been about 25 minutes and right now the thermostat or thermometer on this uh, grill is at 435 degrees, so it's definitely warmed up. I'll go ahead and this is a Weber grill, which uh, is one of those ones that is highly recommended. There we go. It has a little hook on there that I can just hang it off the side of the grill. And I've got my chicken, and I've got a bowl of peanut oil, and I found out through experimentation that. The way to keep your chicken from sticking to the grill is to take and coat it with olive oil. And I may have to go back. that this is a lot more than two people are going to eat in one sitting. It just means that we're going to have lots of leftovers for lunches and so forth. Okay, one more breast. Okay. That is that. So I'll take these dishes in and Put them in the sink, clean them off, and I'll cover this. And the thing about chicken, especially when the grill is this hot, it's probably 400 degrees even so once the temperature comes back up, is that I can't just walk away and ignore it. I'm going to have to come back every 5 or 10 minutes and make sure that it's not burning. I'll flip that meat several times before it's done. Total time of cooking, 35 or 40 minutes. But when I'm done, it'll be perfect. Well, let me go ahead and take these in, and then we'll see what happens in 20 minutes. 
And of course, I've come back with the cleaned plate, which we'll be using to bring the finished chicken in when it's done. And as predicted, the uh, thermostat is right up about 385 degrees right now. So it's definitely still warm enough to cook the chicken. So I'm going to let it set and see what we can. And I do need to go ahead and get my barbecue sauce because as soon as I flip the kit chicken the first time, I need to start coating the chicken with barbecue sauce. So we'll get there. Well, the chicken's been on the uh, grill for about 10 minutes now. Let's go ahead and take a look and see how it is. Temperature is still 385. So I'm sure it's getting a good sear. Okay. As you can see, we haven't actually started burning anything, which is a good thing. I can just start flipping it. And you can see that then get some nice grilling lines on the uh, chicken. Go ahead and flip all the pieces so it'll cook evenly on the other side. And after I've got them all warm, after I got them all cooking, or all flipped, I'm going to take my barbecue choice. We settle on masterpiece as the stuff we prefer, although truthfully a lot of barbecues are just as good as this. This is just the one we happen to get that we like. Okay, so I just take that and then I just take a, a brush and brush it out so it covers it a little bit more evenly. I'll be adding more after we flip it again. I'm sure that we'll be flipping it at least a couple more times. The uh, chicken wasn't out of the freezer as long as I would have liked. If I'd have thought about this, I would have taken it out a little sooner. I think I got it out last night before I went to bed. So. Some of the thicker pieces, especially the uh, thighs, were a little still frozen in the middle. So that first 10 minutes on the grill probably just got them nice and thawed out, as well as putting a char on the first side. Okay, so there we go. I'm gonna cover this back up, and we'll be back in another 10 or so to see how it's coming along. It's been on here for pretty close to 40 minutes total. I flipped it once or twice since I recorded last. Adding a little bit of barbecue sauce each time. I'm going to flip it back again. I'm not going to add any barbecue sauce this time because there's plenty on there. I'm going to start moving it a little closer to the fire too. And it is warm, yes. I checked the thermostat right before I turned on the camera this time, and it was at 360 degrees, so it has not cooled off that much. Still plenty of uh, heat there to cook the chicken, so I'm going to leave it probably for another 10 minutes, and we'll call it done. With that, um, we'll show it pulling out at the end. And I've got to go get some green beans ready to go with it and be ready to serve dinner. We're not going to show you us eating because that's us. <laughs> but I did want to show you how we made some of this stuff. Some old man going into the kitchen. My watch says it's time. So I'm going to... Pull the chicken here off the grill. Hopefully it's all cooked and not raw in the middle, but I don't think it is because it's getting warm in here. So as I said, I've got chicken thighs and chicken breasts 
and I do not want to mix the two up because my wife likes the one and I'll like either but by preference I'll grab the thighs so that she has the uh, chicken breasts and I hope I can squeeze it all onto the table or onto the plate here because it's an awful lot of chicken Okay, well let me go put this inside and then I'll come back out and get the camera and I can cover this up. This will stay hot for quite a few hours, but safe covered up like this. It's not going to go anywhere. I was thinking about doing a fancy green bean dish, but after all the work I did out in the yard today and the effort I put into this cooking, I said we'll just move it and call it good. Well, that's it for another quickie episode of Some Old Man Making Dinner. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope you try out the recipes and maybe you'll like it too. And that's it. Go ahead and hit the like button. Give me a comment if you make it and tell me what you think. And tell your friends so they can try it too. And that's it for this week. Some old man signing off.